Um, one of the things that I changed this year with these experiences, and this is what we call our workshop experiences. The workshops run all day Friday and all day Saturday at a festival. And what we do is we have kind of topic specific workshops. Anything from how do I blend my jazz choir voices? Um, how do I rehearse my rhythm section for my jazz choir? There's all these kind of common topics that come up and we try to find individuals that are experts in that field and have them present to the music educators here in attendance, our local individuals, it's open to the public, come in and check them out, um, to the students and that type of thing. And one of the things that I added this year was a music business element. Um, just seeing how the music industry is shifting and changing, not unlike anything else. One of the ways I wanted to kind of help modernize that was bring in a couple of music business um, presenters. Um, I uh, worked with uh, George Tanner in the, in the uh, business school, as well as our music business professor, um, Sean Copeland, and we found a guest that made sense. Her name's Angela Parrish, and she'll be coming in from Los Angeles, and she kind of has a very, very unique uh, story. She was one of those individuals that went to grad school, didn't really know what she was gonna do when she finished her degree, and she did it in jazz performance. She just literally decided, pack up the car, move to LA. And she lived in her car for a couple months. Um, and I didn't know this until after the fact, but she had lived there in her car just to kind of get started. And uh, if you've had an opportunity, how many of you have seen La La Land, the movie? Jazz movie. So she's actually the first voice that you hear on that movie. And she's been very successful, uh, things from writing musicals to being an active studio musician in all genres of music. And she's just really done well for herself creating a career in music. And uh, having taught college and, and uh, middle school, high school, parents always get worried, well, if they go into music, what are they going to do? They can teach or they can perform. And I'm always like, no, it's much bigger than that. And she's a perfect example of creating a career in music that uh, was not necessarily that, that teacher before. And so she's going to be giving workshops with, uh, starting actually, I believe, Wednesday, uh oh, now I have to look at the calendar. I should know this, right? Wednesday the 20th. So she's going to be working with uh, the uh, business college, and I, I'm waiting to get a confirmation of her lecture time. She's going to be giving a lecture that evening with George Tanner's entrepreneurial group. And uh, then Thursday, Friday and Saturday, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd, she's going to be giving workshops for those students. Basically, what I didn't learn in music school that I wish I had learned, you know, covering some of those music business aspects of how to make it as a musician. So that was a fun new addition to our workshop schedule um, that was kind of a component of keeping a lot of the traditional uh, topics and trying to add and expand. And I foresee that expanding even more um, over the next couple of years of just making sure we're getting those broad topics that, that hit all aspects of music. Um, absolutely. I'm having a hard time getting online and finding where all the workshops are. It's because the workshops just got posted today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question. Now I'm already going to repeat her question. Yeah. So she had asked, I'm having a difficult time finding the workshops um, um, online. And so I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. We had some serious uh, web challenges at the university. We got our student performance schedule and then a filter had broken. And this it didn't work, and so it was one of those we kind of had. A, we were about a week behind on posting those. So as of today, those should be up. Um, and it's about a week late uh, where I wanted it with the schedule, but uh, those should be up and going. Um, we just had a lot of bizarre filter issues of whatever had happened on the technical side, which I don't understand and know. That just things weren't being posted, and when they were populating, it was bringing information from 2017 and 2018. Well, that's what I got. You got yes. 2018? I did. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but it said Saturday the 24th, and I found Yep, perfect. so yeah. there was some flaw in IT that uh, they discovered, and it was populating old information. So okay. apologies, it was one of those things that we just uh, were working through over the last week.
but those should be available to you now. Um, and again, those workshops run open to the public, specifically Friday, Saturday. We, uh, on Thursday, we have basically a welcome party. <laughs> we call it the Lionel Hampton School of Music Day, and that's specifically for the schools that are coming in. Um, I would say about, take a two-hour radius around us, most of those schools are going to be coming and staying for a couple nights. And those schools are just looking for every added opportunity. Anything, any added bonus they can, it's this, you know, they're traveling here, the expense of getting here. So the School of Music puts on a, a whole lot of uh, master classes and introduction to the faculty on Thursday. And then we kind of kick off the festival with what we call Ham's Gala. And that's a concert specifically for those students to introduce them to the University of Idaho music program. Um, so that's a little bit unique, and that's not open to the public because we pack it full of teenagers. Um, but Friday, Saturday, all those workshops are open to the public um, across campus, and those student performances are open to the public as well. Um, the items taking, also taking, that's kind of, again, student performance. Kind of merging into the artists that we bring in, we have one that kind of fits right in between those. And we have a Meet the Artist workshop. And that fits into those workshops we were just talking about, but also our artists. So it kind of helps us bridge the gap. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the artists. I brought a couple posters that you're welcome to take one if you have a business or if you just want one. Um, it kind of gives you dates and our ensembles. Um, but I want to talk to you a little bit about our artists and uh, why they were selected. Um, so on Friday, uh, February 22nd, I, I feel like we have an incredible lineup both Friday and Saturday night. And I'm extremely excited about both nights because of the uniqueness of the individuals coming in and what they're doing in the music industry, not just the jazz world, um, and what that can bring to our community as well, kind of that cultural component. Um, on Friday evening, we have uh, our two university ensembles will pre perform. So Jazz Band 1 under the direction of Ern Seeler will be performing, and Jazz Choir 1, under the direction of Dan Buckfetch, will be performing. Has anyone sung in Dan's choir before? So I, I see a couple familiar faces. Um, Dan's choir will open up the show that evening. And they always play it, do a beautiful overture that is very, it's, I mean, it's ear candy and eye candy. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just fun, it's exciting. Um, they'll open that up Friday evening. And uh, then they'll feature two of our guests that evening. Uh, one being Paul McKee, and the other one being Don Clement. So let me talk about Paul McKee. So Paul McKee is a trombonist, and he currently um, <coughs> teaches at uh, University of Colorado Boulder. So he is, I think he's been in that position three to five years. He used to be out of Florida for many, many years. And I first came across Paul at the UNC Greeley Jazz Festival when I was helping plan their jazz festival back um, from about 2010 to about 2014. I would help their event um, when I was doing my doctorate there. And Paul is one of the most incredible musicians I've ever come across. So he uh, he's played with every name you can imagine and come up in the jazz in industry and more. He uh, is just the nicest human and just down to earth, easy to approach. And the cool thing about Paul is he'll get on stage with Dan and Dan Buckmitch will say, hey, we're doing this. And Paul will be great, let's do it. Probably don't even need to rehearse, that's just how he is and how good he is. And so we'll hear him with both Dan Buckmitch's ensemble, the choir, and Bird Sealer's band. Paul's an incredible composer and arranger as well. Um, numerous big band compositions of his have been played and get played across the world, and he's bringing some of his um, for Bird Sealer's ensemble to play. So we'll get a chance to hear some of his composing and arranging as well. Um, and I haven't been told what he's doing, so I, I would give you more information on that, but uh, I just got with Bird yesterday on that, so waiting for that information. Uh, Don Clement is a, uh, she actually is out of Denver right now as well. She just took a position at Metro, uh, Metro State 
um, kind of in the heart of Denver, and this is her first year there. She's actually a Seattle native. Um, she's been up in Seattle for as long as I've known her. So I don't know how long that is, but I met her first in 2006, I believe, um, just outside of Seattle. And she is an incredible vocalist and an incredible pianist. Um, most recently, uh, I heard her at what is called the Jazz Education Network. And that was down in Reno in early January. And I knew she was going to be there, and we were texting. And I just said, hey, I have these two events that are at the same time. I know you're playing at different times. Which, which ensemble do I need to come hear you with? Because I need to see you for a couple minutes. And she made a recommendation. Oh, man, I was blown away. Just as good as she was back in 2006, 7, and 8 when I saw her, just exponentially. Um, beautiful voice, incredible ears, and just such a sensitive musician. What's really fun about Dawn is <coughs> to put her in any situation and she's going to sound great as a vocalist and a pianist. What was beautiful about this is we can utilize her with the dance choir, give those students a great experience, Burns Band, a great experience. We go to intermission, and following that, her trio that has received uh, numerous awards. It's called the Don Clement Gratitude Trio. Um, the members of her ensemble, Matt Wilson has been at this festival before with uh, his Arts and Crafts project, uh, but Matt Wilson is an incredible drummer and she leads this group and so Matt will be here with her and then a bassist actually out of the Seattle area as well named Chuck Dearborn. Um, so this is a very fun and unique trio um, that uh, holds a lot of like the traditional piano trio elements that we'd expect, but at the same time, she'll be singing and uh, adding some modern elements um, from electronic sounds to a very, very traditional piano trio that we'd expect. And so we see that uh, in the Friday evening concert, and the component that I want to kind of back up and talk about all those student performances that we talked about, some of those individuals will be selected and those individuals will be performing right around the intermission time. And we'll see soloists come and perform, and this is uh, sponsored by Avista, and we have a Avista scholarship through the University of Idaho, uh, Wendelham School of Music, and this particular um, vehicle that we're gonna be using is they'll have an opportunity to perform on the stage that evening, and it's always wonderful to see, you know, the ages and ranges of talent and where they're at, and the high school students will have an opportunity to uh, be selected for that scholarship that evening. We do that both Friday and Saturday. So there is a result of what they were doing in the morning. They do have an opportunity if they're selected to perform that evening at the concert. And it usually hovers right around the intermission. Um, that was Friday. Let me talk about Saturday now. Um, how many of you have not been to the Jazz Festival before? Okay. That's, I, when I ask them, do you have you, it's all the hands go up and I, I can never see the one individual, so I'm glad you've all attended or been involved. This Saturday is very unique um, in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm going to just go program order and kind of explain it out. So we have uh, the story internationally, you know, world famous, you have put all accolades with it, Vanguard Jazz Orchestra. Um, one of the most well-known large jazz ensembles, or sometimes we use the term big bands, um, kind of ever coming to us, which is incredible. Um, the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra got their start in 1966, and really what it came down to was Thad Jones and Mel Lewis. Thad Jones, cornetist, arranger, Mel Lewis, drummer. They were a little bit worn out. They had been uh, on the road a lot. Um, some of the studio work they were doing was very rigorous, and they were kind of looking for a release. They were looking for something different, something that maybe their colleagues could kind of wrap around and do. And so what they decided to do is they approached a, a club owner and said, hey, we kind of want to get this a reading ensemble is what sometimes what we call it. We want to get this reading ensemble together. Can you get us a couple dates at your uh, at your club, and it happened to be um, the village in the village, and 
I said, sure, great. And they got three February dates, and it kind of exploded from 